to sit down. Wow, this is definitely better in person than virtual. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And good morning. Thank you for that kind introduction, Mike. And um, it is just wonderful to be back with you all, the members and supporters of Leadership Lincoln. I'm so grateful to you for hosting the State of the City and for all you do to cultivate servant leaders in our community. And speaking of servant leaders, uh, we lost a good one recently in Tom Lorenz. Uh, Tom made our city a much better place through his dedication to building and bringing the Pinnacle Bank Arena to life, the revitalization of Pinewood Bowl, and all of our city team members know he was an incredible partner to us. He was an amazing leader and beloved colleague to his friends at PBA, and uh, he will be missed by so many. I hope that you will keep his example of kindness and servant leadership close in your hearts and his family as well in the coming days. We will miss Tom. Now I know uh, that we are here this morning to highlight what's happening today in Lincoln, but before we get there, I'd like to take you back in time, just a few years, back to a night when I came home after a lengthy city council meeting to tuck my three children into bed. And as I bent down to kiss my oldest daughter goodnight, she held me tight, she inhaled deeply, and she told me I smelled good. And I wondered, what do I smell like? Was it the spaghetti dinner I'd cooked earlier? Was it my shampoo? So I asked her, and this was her reply. You smell like my blankie. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a good thing because I could not remember the last time I had washed that blankie. But then she added, you smell like home. And in that precious moment, my daughter reminded me that home is so much more than an address. Home is a sense of security and strength and well-being. And I invite you to take a moment to ask yourself, what does home mean to you? Since we're all Nebraskans, maybe this came to mind. <laughs> a little corny. Well, whether you pictured corn or a sea of red at Memorial Stadium or your own mom or dad or children or the Thanksgiving dinner table set with extra folding chairs or even just a simply a safe place to crawl into bed each night after a long day, I imagine that you two pictured the people and the places who give you a sense of security and strength and well-being. That's what I want for my children and for all of us in Lincoln. Ensuring that this city we call home offers everyone a sense of strength, security, and well-being is what first inspired me to run for mayor, and it's what continues to inspire my administration's vision of leading Lincoln towards a more successful, secure, and shared future. Now, uh, little did we know that our work in pursuit of that vision would coincide with a global pandemic. Yet while the pandemic challenged and changed the architecture of our lives, it also revealed the strengths of our community's foundations. It reinforced the importance of working toward a vision of a more successful, secure, and shared future. You could clearly see this vision come to life as our dedicated team at the Lincoln and Lancaster County Health Department worked in collaboration with devoted doctors and nurses, social service providers, cultural center representatives, faith leaders, school officials and teachers to educate and vaccinate our entire community. Our collective efforts resulted in Lancaster County having one of the lowest COVID-19 mortality rates, both in Nebraska and among com comparable counties across the nation. Together, we saved lives. You can also see the fruits of our community's collective efforts in the way Lincoln's economy has rebounded. While many cities across the country are struggling to bounce back from the pandemic, financial experts are taking note of Lincoln's strong economic recovery. While it have compared 180 cities' overall unemployment rates from the years 2019 to 2021 and found that Lincoln led the nation in unemployment recovery. They also compared 150 of the most populated cities across six key categories, financial stability, education, 
health, safety, economy and infrastructure, and pollution in order to determine the best run cities in America. And out of those 150 cities they looked at, Lincoln ranked number six. We are setting our own records too. In 2021, the city issued more building and construction permits than in any other year on record. And as for 2022, we're, we're approaching that record setting level and we still have three more months to go. Yeah, we can applaud for that, that's awesome. I'm really proud to lead our city team in these efforts to support this record-setting investment in Lincoln's growth. And while these records and rankings help us see where we are relative to everyone else, they say less about how we got here and about the kind of home we are and the kind of home we want to be. In other words, about the state of our city. A Chinese proverb says, no matter how stout, one beam cannot support a house. We've witnessed the truth of this proverb over the past three and a half years, and it's important to begin by acknowledging that it takes a whole host of partners to scaffold a safe and successful city, to, to build this place we call home. And so I wanna recognize the members of the Lincoln City Council, my partners in local government. Could you please stand again and be recognized? I also offer my deepest appreciation to our friends and partners on the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners, and the LPS School Board, our Lincoln State Senators, appointed members of our city boards and commissions, our city and county department directors and staff, as well as my team in the mayor's office for their sturdy support of our city. Will you all please give them a round of applause? Part of what makes our, the state of our city so strong is the safety and security that we enjoy here. And this is why public safety is my administration's number one priority. The men and women of Lincoln Fire and Rescue act on this priority every day. Last year, our LFR team saved the lives of residents experiencing non-traumatic cardiac arrest at a rate more than twice the national average. And when, yes, let's clap for that too. And when fires broke out in homes last year, LFR saved on average 98% of the value of the property. Now to keep us safe, our dedicated firefighters and paramedics need a strong home base from which to answer our calls. That's why we're rebuilding Station 8, one of the busiest stations in our city. This new station will include modern living quarters more suitable for today's firefighting workforce many of whom are women. In fact, women serve in LFR's ranks at a rate three times the national average. <laughs> Together with LFR, our Lincoln Police Department is the backbone of our community's public safety response. The quality of life we enjoy is made possible by LPD's commitment to protect and serve our entire community. And as a result of LPD's commitment, violent crime, felonies, misdemeanors, traffic accidents, and traffic injuries all have decreased this year relative to the previous five-year period. Our team... Yeah. Our team at LPD who serve with excellence and put themselves at risk each day deserve appropriate compensation, which is why I am proud our new police contract achieves just that, making our officers the highest paid law enforcement in the state of Nebraska. That enhances LPD's ability to retain and retract the top talent we need to keep us safe. And to keep our community safe as it grows, we continue to grow investments in public safety. Our most recent city budget adds six firefighter paramedics, bringing the total number of LFR personnel added during my administration to 28. And the budget also adds another five police officers, 
two 911 dispatchers, and three civilian employees, which brings the total number of LPD professionals added during my administration to 31. And we complement these investments in personnel with what those first responders need to keep us safe. And this includes training and equipment, help in responding to mental health calls for service, and an expanding partnership through which LPD's Special Victims Unit will be co-located with the Child Advocacy Center to enhance the services they already provide to victims of child abuse and sexual assault. And because public safety is our number one priority, we invest in it in ways that go beyond the essential services delivered by our first responders. I am pleased to announce today that the city is embarking on a bold initiative to eliminate traffic-related deaths and severe injuries in Lincoln with the intermediate goal of reducing them 60% by the year 2045. With leadership from our team at Lincoln Transportation and Utilities, our initiative, Safe Streets Lincoln, a Vision Zero project, will examine many factors that contribute to safe mobility, including roadway design and speeds, behaviors, technology, and policies and work to achieve that ultimate goal of zero fatalities and severe injuries among our drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. And we'll probably start by encouraging, uh, <laughs> there, was, there was a picture of a man on a cyclist, no? We're a, no. He had his hands in there. We were gonna try and make sure he puts his hands on his handlebars. Okay. And while the safety and security top the list of my administration's priorities, we also understand that Home should be a place that offers a sense of belonging. Creating a community where all of us enjoy true belonging and be, experience the equal opportunity to reach our full human potential is the foundation of our One Lincoln Initiative. This initiative begins with City Hall, where we work to make our team increasingly reflective of the community we serve. And to this end, we have hired a diversity, equity, and inclusion manager in our human resources department, diversified city boards and commissions, and taken administrative action to protect city employees from discrimination. We also joined the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, and through that network, a cadre of our city team members from every department are currently undertaking a year-long DEI training. And while we still have work to do, Lincoln's score in the Human Rights Campaign's Municipal Equality Index has increased by 39 points during the past three years. Our score in Lincoln on that Municipal Equality Index today stands at 92 out of 100, surpassing Omaha to become the highest score of any city in Nebraska. Our efforts to ensure that all feel at home in Lincoln also mean that we welcome newcomers into our community and welcome back those whose ancestors first lived here. I was honored to participate in a recent ceremony with members of the Oto Missouri tribe, as together we promoted goodwill and an awareness that our city rests on the homeland of their forebears. Our present day residents travel many roads to make Lincoln their home. Our city's growing population includes 30,000 immigrants and refugees from 150 countries. Our new Lincoln and Lancaster County Welcoming and Belonging Strategic Plan recognizes and builds on the economic and cultural vibrancy that our new American friends and neighbors bring to our entire community. And as we advance equity, we work to eliminate disparities between our community members' quality of life and access to services. Here are just a few examples. To support equitable access to the lifelong learning opportunities offered by our city libraries, we recently eliminated overdue fees on all library materials. For elders in our community, we support independent living with hot meals, and fitness classes, counseling, and companionship. And in the coming months, we plan to open the doors to Victory Park the new home base for our aging partners department and for enhanced services to Lincoln seniors and veterans. Yeah. 
For our youngest residents, we launched the Lead Safe Lincoln Initiative this year. Lead Safe Lincoln helps test children for lead exposure and assist families with children who show elevated lead levels. And through this federally funded initiative, we improve these families' health with home inspections, risk assessments, and lead paint and lead pipe remediation that make Lincoln homes safer and put parents' minds at ease as they tuck their own children into bed at night. I'm thrilled that this work to ensure all Lincoln children are healthy and get a great start in life just got a huge boost. Our most recent city budget funds a universal home health visitation program that makes health department nurses available to support all infants born in Lincoln, as well as their moms. And this program does more than take baby steps. It will help our children hit their stride, growing up healthy and ready to contribute to a thriving Lincoln of the future. And beyond this commitment to home visits for babies and their moms, to lead safe homes for young children, and to building a city where all feel at home. It's important to underscore that part of our mission is to ensure that every Lincoln resident has an actual place to call home. Our city team has been laser focused on this throughout the pandemic. And utilizing federal pandemic relief funds, and collaborating with our nonprofit service provider partners in the Tenant Assistance Project, we have helped 5,000 help households pay a combined $40 million in rent and utilities. This extraordinary effort has kept tenants safely housed and property managers and owners' incomes stable. And we made further progress on our goal to ensure that all community members have a place to call home when Lincoln became just one of 22 cities in the nation to win a federal grant for a project that ends to end, aims to end youth homelessness. Working in partnership with local agencies, this project will help us create a vital safety net for Lincoln youth. And ending homelessness is complex, and it requires a multifaceted approach, which is why we are taking an additional pivotal step to house our most vulnerable residents. I am pleased to announce today that my administration is allocating $4.2 million in federal relief funds to build a 24-room permanent supportive housing facility to help alleviate chronic homelessness in Lincoln. These efforts to house people experiencing homelessness are ones we undertake in addition to the work that our city team does each day to facilitate growth in the supply of all housing types. Our work to support the private sector in growing Lincoln's housing stock is resulting in historic levels of residential construction. The combined number of residential housing construction permits that the city issued last year and this year to date exceeds the number of residential permits issued in Lincoln during any other two-year period since the 1970s. Where, is, yeah. Where are the youth of uh, Lincoln, the youth leadership Lincoln? They're all sprinkled right here. You're too young to remember the 1970s, but this is what the fashion and the phones looked like. That is how long it has been since we have had this level of residential construction. Now, beyond these daily efforts to support the creation of housing at every price point. I am so pleased to report that we are well ahead of schedule to meet my administration's ambitious goal to create 5,000 new or rehabilitated affordable housing units by 2030. In fact, yes. In just two years so far, we have incentivized the creation of over 1,200 new or rehabilitated units. And to preserve and enhance the quality of our existing affordable housing stock, we recently launched a rental rehabilitation program in the south of downtown neighborhood. The first phase of this multi-year program aims to improve 100 older dwellings and maintain affordable rental rates in this historic part of town. And 
And while there is much to celebrate in building and improving housing locally, we are wise to remember that we all inhabit a much larger home that supports everything and everyone we hold dear. We live in a crucial moment for the future of our planet where the decisions we make today determine the type of world that our children and grandchildren will inherit. And if that maybe sounds too abstract or daunting, it's worth remembering the words of the Indian philosopher Ravindranath Tagore, who long ago said, let us not pray to be sheltered from dangers, but to be fearless when facing them. <laughs> and this, this fearless spirit animates the work of my resilient Lincoln Initiative, through which we tackle the reality of our climate-related risks and recognize that embedded in those risks lie opportunities, opportunities presented in our city's climate action plan, the first of its kind in Nebraska, actions we are taking to build a more sustainable and resilient future for everyone who calls Lincoln home. We took a huge step toward a more sustainable and resilient Lincoln this summer when shoulder to shoulder with key stakeholders, we launched our city's efforts to secure a second source of water. And while projections indicate that we have adequate water supply for the next 26 years, we must begin planning now to ensure that Lincoln can continue to grow and thrive in a hotter and drier future. This work will take decades, and while many of us won't be around when that ribbon is cut, we owe our children this future. And our city's public transportation system is accelerating towards this more sustainable and resilient future, but without putting a foot on the gas. LTU secured one of the largest federal grants in city history to build a new multimodal transportation center. I see Liz Elliott clapping in the background. <laughs> the transportation center will connect people more efficiently to their jobs and to school. It will enhance the rider experience, improve working condition or conditions for our drivers, and help us meet two climate goals that my administration has set. To convert our city fleet to 100% electric renewable or alternatively fueled vehicles by 2040. That's a good one. And the other goal to uh, reduce Lincoln's net greenhouse gas emissions 80% by the year 2050. Preparing our infrastructure and our community to be more secure and resilient in the face of accelerating climate change necessitates a collective effort. And that's why the city created a climate smart collaborative with Lincoln Public Schools, the University of Nebraska Lincoln, Lincoln Electric System, and Lancaster County. Working together, we are positioning our community to become a leader in powering our vehicles with clean and renewable energy while reducing harmful greenhouse gas emissions. And as we advance climate action strategies, natural climate solutions also play an important role, which is part of why our Lincoln Parks and Recreation Department works so hard to protect and grow green spaces and our urban tree canopy. I'm particularly proud uh, of their partnership with the Nebraska Forest Service and the Lincoln Community Foundation and our Urban Development Department. They are piloting a new grant-funded effort to replace and re to remove and replace at-risk trees on the properties of low-income homeowners. And this investment in maintaining our urban forest, it cleans our air, it conserves energy, it cools our streets, and it preserves the high quality of life that we enjoy here in Lincoln. In tandem with our actions to support sustainable long-term growth, we prioritize current economic growth opportunities for our residents and businesses through our Lincoln Forward Initiative. Our efforts bolster those of the private sector by making strategic investments in workforce development that connect workers to the careers they desire and businesses to the workers they need. We delivered in a historic way on this commitment to cultivating economic opportunity when we awarded $12 million from our American Rescue Plan funds to develop the workforce we need in Lincoln. Six local recipient organizations will train and connect people with high demand skills to jobs in key industries, including welding, the health sciences, IT, manufacturing, and childcare. 
The work to move Lincoln forward happens literally every day at City Hall. Our voter-approved Lincoln on the Move initiative has been paving the way for new road construction and improvements to existing streets since 2019. And this initiative has supplemented our regular budget for streets by nearly $42 million so far, and it will invest millions more over the course of its six-year duration. Lincoln is a city that aligns mobility, safety, growth, and economic opportunity. And our work to move Lincoln forward is clear not only on our streets, but also in our skyline. Remember that record-setting building and construction activity I was mentioning earlier? Here are just a few of the projects supported by the city with financial incentives and infrastructure that have put building cranes in the air and construction crews to work. Duncan Aviation is expanding and adding new jobs. The new Scarlet Hotel is allowing us to welcome more visitors to Innovation Campus and our city. The Telegraph District is creating a thriving new neighborhood for work and life. And some really good hot yoga, by the way. Centerpoint is transforming Traybert Hall into a campus for health and well-being that will provide housing and substance use prevention, medical and mental health services. Gatehouse Rose is, will become the largest affordable housing project since we adopted our Affordable Housing Coordinated Action Plan. Tabitha's intergenerational living community will house elder residents and the nurse, nursing students who are training to care for them. And the American Job Center will soon connect more job seekers with skills, resources, and opportunities from their new headquarters on the first floor of the newly renovated Eagle Parking Garage. As we move Lincoln forward, we step up to the plate with our private sector partners to launch game-changing catalyst projects that grow economic opportunity and our quality of life. Standing with our partners in the grass last week near Oak Lake, we unveiled plans for the Lincoln Youth Complex that will literally turn a field of dreams into eight real life ball fields. This complex will become the first youth sports program in Lincoln targeted to include underserved youth in a significant scale while also playing host to tournaments and visitors who infuse dollars into our economy for years to come. Another Catalyst project aims to capitalize on our community's status as a hub for live music. I'm excited to announce today that we are officially kicking off our downtown music district project. We want Lincoln to be in the vanguard of the Music City's movement and potentially one of the first communities in the country to create a district focused on the live music scene. We are convening a music district advisory committee that will meet for the first time this week to support development of a flourishing local music ecosystem that fuels job creation, talent retention and attraction, entrepreneurialism, tourism, and some really good times. And as we enjoy more good times together, and as we grow the good life in the capital city, I hope you share my sense of pride in calling Lincoln home. Like the corn our state is known for, Lincoln has the juice. <laughs> Lincoln also has something else. And for the first time in 90 years, we have a new shared symbol of this place we call home. Last year, residents offered their ideas for that symbol in the form of a new city flag. And of the more than 190 people who submitted designs, local artist Ed Mejia, who is here with us this morning, can you wave? <laughs> Ed created one entitled All Roads Lead to Lincoln, and that flag rose to the top. Ed's design, now our city flag, invites people to see themselves in it, to see themselves as that little star in the middle as they create new things and as they build their families and their careers and the lives here. To see Lincoln's flag is to feel we are rooted in a very special place. We are home a home where we feel safe, secure, and well, where we have opportunities to build our lives and livelihoods, where we belong. This home we call Lincoln 
is a great place to plant our flag, to proudly raise it, and to affirm that the state of our city is strong. Thank you.